pass that on. We're pleased to welcome now Austin Golding with Golding Barge Line. Hey, Austin, good to see you again. Hey, Jar, good to see you. So tell us what the latest is with respect to the level of the Mississippi River and how that might be affecting your business and shipping in particular on the river. Sure. Well, we, uh, we're seeing, again, the same kind of low water that we've seen the last couple of years. Uh, you know, last year around October, it got really, really bad. This year, we're looking at kind of the same scenario uh, as we speak. Uh, it's hitting a low uh minus 10 on the gauge a low river point this year on in memphis is right now so uh we got another forecast last night that we lost a little more ground uh looking at here in vicksburg uh it's not as dire uh, the river usually gets a little a little more swift as you come south of greenville but really between greenville and cairo illinois it is a it's a mess i talked to a lot of my guys last night kind of getting ready for the, the show today and the guys out there in the river are, saying that at any time you have a, a crossing where the river has a, a sharp bend and the water slows down, uh, you're going to have a lot of shallow spots. And there's miles and miles. They're, they're going, you know, 40, 50 miles straight with less than two foot of water underneath the boats and barges that are drafting nine feet. Um, and so when you only have 10 foot to 15 foot of water in there and you're moving uh, the amount of tonnage we are, uh, you know, it's, it makes for a very scary watch. Hmm. Interesting. So it's a little surprising to me, honestly, Austin. I, I thought, at least here in the state of Mississippi, with respect to annual rainfall on a year-to-date basis, we're actually up above our average. So is this a problem north of us, upriver, that's causing this primarily? For sure. You know, one of my kind of more favorite stats about river uh, flow is that Ohio, the Ohio River actually supplies about 60 to 65 percent of the water to the lower Mississippi River. Uh, the upper Mississippi River is only about 25%, and the other uh, small percentage comes out of the Missouri. So the upper and the Ohio, and the Missouri for that matter, but really the upper and the Ohio have a lot of locks and a lot of uh, kind of stale chambers, which so meaning that there's not much current through there. They're really preserving a lot of that water level for uh, you know, water supply, flood control, environmental control, and really to maintain those pools in between those locks and the Ohio. So north of us they have the ability to hold the water back and when they haven't had much rain like they haven't this year uh we suffer the consequences south of there uh really the most volatile part of the entire system is from cairo to natchez mississippi uh that stretch right there has no locks on it uh it's all maintained by the corps of engineers dredging capacity which right now there's only three dredges that i've seen that are moving up and down the lower mississippi river um and we really need more direct allocation for dredging every year for low water. Uh, the Corps, when they have the resources deployed, the Corps of Engineers does a great job of keeping us running. Uh, we just feel like they might need more dredging capacity, more dredging uh, funding. They have to ask for it, of course, uh, and I would be willing to bet the operators are, are going to be asked for more than the uh, the, more than the people that are the regulators will. Um, but we feel like they when when, get, when they have the assets, the Corps of Engineers does a great job of keeping us open, but. Ultimately, Gerard, the bottom line here is this will result in less product on barges. We'll have to reduce drafts uh, this month and next month to be able to transit safely, hmm. which means barging from a per bushel, per barrel, per ton standpoint will get less efficient. Right. I mean, so that just drives cost up, essentially, right? I mean, if you if you got the same, I guess, footprint, but you, you're carrying less weight, that means you got to have – I would assume more barges to ship the same amount of, of goods. You do, you know, and, and it's unfortunate. You know, I think it totally has an impact on people's long view of our industry's viability. Uh, you know, it, it, the river's always been a volatile place. I mean, here in Vicksburg, even on a seasonal uh, year, we see 50 to 55 foot of variance in river level here in Vicksburg. Wow. Uh, and so th there, is a, there is a lot of understanding and a lot of uh, operational yeah, I would say versatility when it comes to how the environment we can operate in. But in these extremes, I always tell people I'll take extreme high water over extreme low water. Uh, yeah. Extreme high water, we can overload the barges and we can watch out for certain pinch points. But low water, we have less product and more pinch points. Yeah, makes makes total sense. So, Austin, just curious, what, what sorts of, of products are, are suited for shipping via barge? So, you know, traditionally, uh, over the course of most people that are listening's lifetime, 
of course, we all are very, very familiar with the agricultural products that move on the river, whether we're getting our, our, our uh, bounty out of the fields into the global market, moving south, or they're getting fertilizer transited in by barge. Uh, that accounts for a very large percentage of the tonnage on the river. Um, <clears throat> the majority of the, of the tonnage on the river, though, uh, is uh, oil and gas or coal. And as you've seen, less coal will be moved as coal started to be phased out and you've seen more pipelines be built. Uh, you've seen more coal and oil and gas come off the river. Uh, the products that we've seen increase on the river, we've seen a lot of uh, steel products, uh, whether it be the base material, the ore and the, the scrap metal or the finished products, the, the roll steel or the plate steel moves a lot on the river now. Um, and we've seen uh, uh, the amount of passenger traffic increase on the river. Uh, the hmm. amount of tour boats and the amount of people coming in and out. I mean, here in Vicksburg, uh, we're going to have a boat here about every week of the year, uh, dropping people off uh, here in town. The, I, 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 you know, I am part of a family business. I'm third generation in it, and I give my dad a hard time because peak river transportation tonnage-wise was in the late 80s and early 90s. So I do ask him what he got me into every <laughs> once in a while. But uh, you can that, that's just maybe some back history. The degradation of coal, the increase of pipelines, and really the increase of highway traffic. Uh, we've not done a good job as, as uh, rivermen of creating ways to carry those products that are on the highway with us on our barges yet. Gotcha. So you're dealing with a, a difficult situation right now with the levels being low. What's the forecast? What's the outlook? How, how far out can you can you uh, get data about that? You know, I, I can, with some reasonable confidence, look out a couple weeks, um, and with a little bit of with a little bit of variance, look out a month. Uh, but what I'm staring at right now is this hurricane that will develop this week that will come in on the Florida Panhandle. All the models that I've seen have it curving back above Memphis into the Ohio Valley. Uh, I sure hope that it holds a lot of its water potential until it gets in that part of the country. And that could that one system like that can buy us a couple of weeks, if not a month. Um, wow! And we've seen we've seen that happen where if they move fast enough and slow enough, they move fast enough over the Gulf states and into the Mid America. Uh, part of the system and really stall out there. We can see it, but you know, one of the one of the hidden um, uh, parts of not having a very, uh, you know, I don't want to call it active. Let's call it dangerous hurricane season because we have had an active season, but one for this part of the country that we don't see a lot of action in. We don't get much water in the river when we don't have a lot of hurricanes, and um, yeah. you know, a lot of those systems that move seasonally through the part middle part of America are. are what keep our what keep our river uh, maintained? And typically, Makes in my sense. career, I've only dealt with low water in August and September. In October, November, December, we start filling back up. It seems like now low water has recently, with without as many hurricanes, lasted into the into the holiday season. It makes sense. This one is, I've seen the charts, really strange. Is it not going up the panhandle and then turning to the west and sort of hovering right. in, in the Memphis and then moving for, uh, to the northeast? That's unusual. It's very unusual, but we'll take it. It's almost like the good Lord is, <laughs> is uh, answering some prayers. So yeah. we'll hope that high-pressure system keeps shoving it over that way. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it, it's always look, always look at least 100 miles upriver to see at least what the, the impact in your in your uh, town is going to be as far as river levels. Anything that falls right on your head is only going to benefit what's south of you. I got you. That, make, that makes total sense. Well, we got 30 seconds or so left, but when, when you experience these low river levels and it, and it makes shipping via barge less efficient, does that mean that the shippers seek other modes such as such as truck or rail? When they're available, you know, our tonnage is hard to, is hard to transplant. Uh, when it's yeah. available, they will. You know, usually that's a pipeline when it comes to oil and gas. I got uh, you. But we're going to keep fighting, and uh, we'll be here next year. I really appreciate the chance to talk about it, Gerard. Thank you very much. Thank you, Austin. Well, I'm I'm hoping that we get a little rain up river there to help us out here. It's important to our state. Appreciate it, Austin. Thanks a lot. Hey, thank you.